Derek Goff has told me some information about who he handed stuff to, and one of them is a guy called Neil Spring, who had connections with Oxford University. Yes, and he's yes. supposedly given Neil Spring some of the audio tapes of Goff talking to the NATO guy. But I think Goff, well, Goff says that they went missing from Neil Spring's locker. So he lost those audio tapes. So y y did you have some um, correspondence with Neil Spring, David? I I, I'm assuming Neil Spring lives in South Wales, close to Derek Goff. Right. Or to, sorry, David Coggins. Because I, 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 I wasn't sure how they got to know each other. Anyway, I think it's because he lives in South Wales and close right. by. Uh, yeah, so Oxford University had a year or two ago formed a new UFO group, um, and they had speakers and talks. And they invited Graham Birdsell to come and speak, who was the past editor of the Quest International UFO magazine and the director of Quest International. And at some point in the proceedings, uh, Neil Spring apparently took Graham to one side and said, whispered something to him like, you know, I think you ought to know about this. Mm -hmm. So he was acquainting Graham of his knowledge from those audio tapes, thinking Graham might do something with it. Uh, and I think at that time, when he got back to Yorkshire, to Leeds, uh, Tony Dodd had actually left and resigned his position with Quest International. So he thought I would be per the appropriate person to pass this message on and a phone number. Um, so I uh, I did ring him uh, and with the hope that he would uh, furnish me with a copy of these tapes. And uh, he referred to this th third person, which is obviously this army chap that you've identified, mm -hmm. and said it's more than his life's worth to pass them over, right. which is a bit strange when he's already had them and David Coggins has already had access to them. He wouldn't give me the contact number of this military guy right. or, or even David Coggins, because if he didn't know that I didn't know David Coggins at the time, which right. I didn't. Right. So. I think you and I are both of the same mindset that we're not, we don't make a judgment as to the true motives or the reasons behind this. We're looking at the evidence. All right? Right. Now, yes. the knee-jerk response is whoever's doing this is an absolute evil uh, thing, which it, it appears to be on the surface. This, it, it's, it's not benevolent in any way. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a, quite a large school of thought in the field of ufology, which is that no non-human intelligence would ever harm another uh, intelligence, shall we say. Yes. So there's, they're all benevolent, in other words. Mm. And this is um, put forward by people such as um, Dolores Cannon and Stephen Greer. Stephen, as, Greer. Stephen yeah. Greer is also of that same mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't make a judgment as to why they're doing this mm. and what the ultimate reason is. But, they, but, but Greer in particular has been making noises recently about the reasons for this. Just tell us a bit about that, David. Yes, yeah, so he's issued a, a paper which was issued on the um, 31st of August, so very recently. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't read the whole paper, I've only read the extracts, which has been circulating around in the last week mm -hmm. on the internet. Uh, and he's, uh, I mean, I agree with some of his comments in the sense that he's postulating that uh, this unseen government and you know the uh, industry and the money, financial institutions and the the, the oil barons and all the rest of it, uh, are um, leading up to some false flag case where they might do things to replicate what the ETs are doing mm -hmm. to put the fear of God into everybody to make the general populace think we've got a threat mm -hmm. from. An outside uh, from an outside source yeah. off planet. Yeah, uh, so they might fabricate an alien threat. Yeah. Yes, yes. And 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 so his hypothesis is that anything that seems to be evil connected with unexplained UFO type phenomenon is all a psyop. Yes, he says that's that what he's saying. He's saying that the evil people are the government agencies, or whoever these people are, or orchestrating and ordering mm -hmm. th this sort of activity to, to so fool the public and the media. 
you know. So, so, so. The, the, my response to that would be, well, okay, why have they got a NATO group being set up, which is covert apart from the one whistleblower that we've had, yeah. to tidy up after human mutilation cases? Why, do this, why does the military need their own group to keep it secret and keep it covered up and take away the evidence and seal off the area and all the rest of it? Mm. Why do they need that group? Uh, <laughs> just look at the case on Filey Beach. Is yeah. Stephen Gray saying that the military did that seal? Yeah. That was just so happened to be found one morning by yeah. a couple of people walking past on Filey Beach. Yeah. And there are well, cases all over the world as well. Yes, well, the case Tony reported, and it's in his book, uh, on beaches, adjacent beaches in the Orkney Islands in mm -hmm. 1994, 93, a 30, over 30 seals found, uh, in with all decapitated, and, but, but cut through the same... Mm -hmm. vertebrae joint in the neck mm -hmm. and I mean I've just looked think of the Dolby Forest cases is mm. he saying then that the US military is running around Dolby Forest or acquiring animals from all different sources some of them farm animals you've got sheep you've got well there was a donkey there's a fox a badger yeah. all with the same sort of similar yeah. injuries in yeah. a pile yeah. in Dolby Forest and the military are doing that deliberately so that someone might just by accident come across them which, and then which, tell which, Tony Dodd which, which who, who yeah. several years later might just so happen to write about it in his book yeah. and then we might talk about it in an interview just to scare the public to think <laughs> that it's that ETs are evil yeah yeah is that contrived or what yes um, yeah. is it not more likely that this is some ex unexplained phenomenon that mm. is going on in the UK and yeah. other parts of the world I mean Stephen well, Gray is, is postulating that some of these are done by the military replicating animal mutilations and abductions mm -hmm. uh, and I think to myself how can the military I don't think they've got the expertise I mean thinking of what Professor Friedman has said that a there'd have to be a skilled and more skilled than Professor Tony Fremont you know uh, and how many people are in the ranks in a, uh, wearing a uniform in the United States Army or the Air Force or even the Navy have got this expertise to to replicate what the aliens are doing mm -hmm. to animals or even human beings. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think his, his reasoning stands up to scrutiny, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Putting forward this argument that all ETs would have to be benevolent, that that is possibly some kind of psyop in itself, mm. in that, in my view, that at some level, the NSA or whoever have had some contact with the groups that are possibly doing this and mm. maybe even have knowledge of it. I mean, Goff said that, mm. that they had advanced warning of what day there was going to be UFO activity and would specifically monitor the situation on certain days. They mm. knew when mutilations were more likely than others. Right. They knew which days. So mm. that suggests to me there's been some communication at some level. Mm. And going to the Dan Sherman interview, he also alleged that they were in cahoots to some degree. I mean, mm. we don't know exactly what that is, mm. but perhaps this is a way of them, I don't know, um, watering down or playing down the seriousness of what's really going on. What, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that, David? Do you, do, you have any, do you think it's an entirely separate thing that they just haven't got control over? It's possible. Uh, I think maybe some historical deals have been struck mm -hmm. with maybe one group of aliens. I mean, what we all keep forgetting, including me, there's not just one alien species out there visiting Earth. Mm -hmm. There might be 30 or more. I mean, totally thought there were more than 30. So they've all got slightly different agendas and they might need the organs and tissue and, and the blood from lots of animals and the same for some a number of human beings to do what they need to do, which might even be, in the long term, be for the good of us all. Mm. I mean, that's conjecture yeah. on my part, but there must be a, a purpose yeah. and a reason to keep on doing this. Yeah, and I, mean, I think that the, the authorities in the 50s or whatever, any deals may have been struck, uh, there's the aliens have possibly reneged a bit on the promises or mm -hmm. we may have as well you know exchanging yeah. information technologies which would be useful 
yeah. to us uh, and American. I mean, clearly, if the if the Goff story is entirely true, which I suspect it is, um, then they haven't the, our own military, NATO, whichever group's in charge of it, haven't got control of it. Otherwise, they wouldn't need a group a group to go around running after the sweeping the up the mess, sweeping up the mess, yeah, and, yeah, then, yeah. and then hiding it from the public. Yeah, yeah. So they've not got a handle on it. No, which. They, they would definitely, we know that they've covered up on animal mutilation, and yeah. as Tony says in his book, yeah. this is an even higher level cover up. Yes, yes. Uh, for obvious reasons, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't agree with covering it up, and I don't think you do either. No, um, no. But people in positions of power, th they probably wouldn't want to share that information. No. I mean, Stevie Greer is a very persuasive, strong character. Mm -hmm. Quite bullish, in my opinion. Um, and you know he's dictatorial a bit perhaps like you follow my line or you don't type of thing you know and, he, and he's got his own agenda anyway he, I mean he runs tours which earns him an income for taking people on contact uh, and um, sessions to meditate at some place in the States which he regularly uses and which he charges I guess quite a few hundred dollars a yeah, throw for that. To try and make Telepathic contact with extraterrestrials. Yes, uh, and they, and they, they get lights, responses, and so on, and people get excited about that. So he doesn't want to show the aliens in a bad light because that would frighten people off. Mm -hmm. Going on to these special mm -hmm. tours of uh, trips and meditation and making contact with the aliens or a particular group of aliens, mm -hmm. which might be quite friendly mm -hmm. towards us Earthlings. Mm -hmm in that particular location i don't know but he's trying to put this overall umbrella up yeah. that I they're all not here to do us any harm and they're all here for yeah. our benefit and it may be that for our benefit they have to take so many animals and all this uh, blood and um, guts if you like mm. uh, even from human beings mm. t to something to do with preserving our planet and us as a human being, the human race, in the future. Mm -hmm. So it might be sacrifices, you, people might say, have to be made mm -hmm. for the good of the rest of us. Yeah. And also they want to keep, preserve this planet. Mm -hmm. So that, so when you think that the United States government and or whoever they are, have killed all those people on 9-11, London bombings and all these other atrocities, as you know, mm -hmm. to further their cause, to enter a war, yeah. some other country, the Middle East or whatever, for them to agree or be happy to sit back and let a few men in the street, or women in the street, including children, yeah. to be abducted, never to be seen again, and mutilated as well, yeah. as long begs as the question. Uh, yeah. and, a, and lots of ufologists and, and people I'm close to, and I realise what we're doing now is going to upset them a little bit. Uh, which I, I'm sorry I'm having to do that by making this documentary, but I think it has to be has to be told and has to be said. And I can have sympathy why certain people who are quite close to me, who have been investigating animal mutilations, have have got into that and done so because they've had interaction them personally with ETs over many years and members of their family have and because this is happening it's a very unsettling thought to think that the next time they take me I'm not coming back or they're going to mutilate me or a member of my family so I can appreciate and understand the antipathy to the people who have had that association with ETs which I haven't had to be anti the prospect and the acceptance of human beings being treated like the animals in the field. You see what I mean? Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, and it, it does divide the camps in the ufology and as you've said it's often a step too far. It clearly is for Linda Moulton Howe with all her vast experience of information she has upon earth files mm -hmm. was a pioneer in bringing the animal mutilation uh, cases and information to the public domain you know bless her heart she did a tremendous job and still is but then she stops yeah. 
at this point of not non-acceptance of the human element and you have to ask the question why is she doing that has she been warned off and said if you want to continue doing what you're doing with coast to coast and all the rest of it you've got to not involve or mention or talk about human mutilations otherwise you're out of business lady I can I can hear them it's threatening she's been threatened she told me and Robert one day and we were in Wiltshire she'd had a gun pointed in her face to threaten her because she was already overstepping the market but even when the animals stopped. so that, that's a that's a clue to me that you know if she's getting threatened about her in information she was divulging and promulgating on the internet about animals and all the talks and the books and all the rest of it some, something stopped her.